Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a MacBook Pro here, this is a 13 inch and it's a 2012 model. Um, and it's in because apparently the speakers are very muffled. Um, so we're going to have a look at that and see what we can do with it. Um, so firstly, quick assessment of this thing. It's in a battered um, solid shell case um, and it's very dirty. Um, there's dust and dirt everywhere on this thing. And also like if I open up the hinge there, the amount of play in this screen like that's that's crazy man those screws have basically fallen out so the condition of the laptop tells me that it's entirely likely it's just chocked full of dust and grit and grime um, so in all probability this is going to be a disassemble and clean job and I'm hoping that if I just take it to bits clean it and put it back together again um, the speakers will come good so first of all let's just switch it on and just see what the chime sounds like uh, is, have we got battery power? Yes, we have. All right, that was very quiet. Um, I'll do that again for you guys. One moment. So yeah, that uh, that certainly sounded like it was very muffled. It sounds like something is against the speaker cones. So yeah, we're going to strip it down, take it apart, and uh, see if we can sort that out. And at the same time, we'll just tighten everything up on this thing. And, you know, the chances are that if all the screws on this are tightened up, it'll come good, basically, and it won't feel like it's... Well, it'll feel slightly less of a eight-year-old... Well, oh, God, it's 2021. Yeah, 10-year-old laptop, more or less. Ugh. Oh, well. Okay, let's open this thing up. Every screw on this thing is loose. All the bottom screws are loose. The only reason why these things haven't fallen out is because of the hard shell case. Which doesn't vindicate the hard shell case. I don't like these, these cases. I think they just trap dirt and grit and just wreck the case of the laptop. Like, by virtue of the fact that this thing is covered in scratches of just all the dirt and grit that's trapped inside the case, that kind of tells you a thing or two about how effective the case is. In my opinion... But then on the other hand, if the case has protected it from actually getting a dent from being knocked on a door handle, then arguably it's done its job. Hmm. Right. Dave. Uh, okay, well, there's a modest amount of dust in here. It's not horrendous. I've certainly seen much worse, but there's certainly enough to be worth cleaning. The fan is uh, looking a bit sorry for itself. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to... Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Take a look at this. So this is the subwoofer speaker in the bottom of the laptop. And, yeah, the cone on that is gone. That guy's dead. So that might just be the issue just straight away. Um, because that's the, little, that's the little subwoofer. And that guy is going to sound muffled as hell. That might just be the problem straight up. Uh, can I disconnect that on its own? Let me uh, just peel back here. I've almost certainly got another one of these lying around that's in decent condition and I can just swap it out with a different one. Oh yeah, I remember, so yeah, so one of the speakers, okay, so the speakers in this in this laptop, um, we've got one under the DVD drive. This DVD drive has been replaced with an SSD um, caddy. Um, at least I assume there's an SSD in there, not just another hard drive. Uh, then uh, those two speakers connect here to that connector. Then there's another speaker on the other side of the logic board there. Um, so... Uh, I need to take all of this out to replace this guy. Um, do I have another one of those lying around? One moment, I'm going to have a look. That'll do it. So there's the uh, there's the right-hand speaker and the subwoofer, and that one, the cone is perfectly intact. So this is probably going to be as simple as that. Uh, let's strip this thing down. We'll clean it up, change out that speaker, and it should be good.
yeah ssd so you you can tell that this is an early ssd conversion because um uh, these kinds of SSD conversions, this was a really good way of drastically increasing the performance of these laptops in the early days of SSDs, where big capacity SSDs were still really heckin' expensive. Um, so the logical thing to do was to uh, get rid of your super drive and put an SSD in. Although my method for doing this was always to put the SSD in the main bay and the hard drive in the expansion module, um, because I suspect uh, well, no, I'm not sure about that, actually. I, I always thought at the time that this uh, mini SATA interface might be slightly slower. However, to my knowledge, I think they're both SATA 2 anyway, so I don't think it makes any difference. But but anyway, yeah, familiar site for early SSD upgrades. I was rocking one of those in my uh, one of my Apple laptops for a very long time. Uh, right, so let's keep taking stuff apart here. Turn the laptop round, I'm working left-handed. Remember to turn stuff round when you're working on it. Make the device work for you, not the other way around. There we go. So there's our knackered one coming out. Um, so we could remove, that's the Wi-Fi module there. Uh, we could remove that. However, the replacement I've got has got another Wi-Fi module bolted onto it already. So I'm gonna save myself two screws of work and just replace the whole lot. Okay, so that is positioned there. Before I put the rest of this in though, I'm gonna take the display assembly off because um, those horrendous hinges also need to be dealt with. So I'm gonna fix that while I'm here. And uh, uh, I'll basically just charge the customer my standard service fee um, for essentially just taking the laptop apart and putting it back together again. This is a second-hand speaker. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's just one out of the scraps box. I'm not gonna charge for parts like this. If I didn't have any and I needed to get one from eBay and I got a, a nice shiny new one, I'd charge for that, but you know, there. Yeah, I'll just give them that one. What would you even charge for that? A couple of quid, who cares? Labor is where the money is at. Oops, I've gone off shot. I'm just taking off the uh, screws for the other hinge. Now we open the laptop up and hang it off the side of the bench and take off the last two screws. There we go, put that to one side. Look at that man, it's terrible. And the other side, just as bad. The only reason why these screws haven't fallen out is that there is literally no room for them to fall out. It's why, despite coming loose, these hinges never actually break um, because there's not physically any space for the screws to fall out into. So therefore, the worst that can happen is they become flappy and loose, which is um, not bad going. Whether it's designed by that deliberately or just by accident, I don't know. Either way, the hinges don't break on these. They just become really loose. What's coming off here? Oh, no. Ah, the display assembly is very much dying, though. Tremendous care should be taken that when you start saying sort of, oh, we'll uh, service this thing up, you start uncovering even more serious problems, and you're like, oh, this is not what the device came in for. How deep are we going into this rabbit hole? I'm going to tighten these hinges and then get the heck out of this thing. So there's a lot of uh, room for adjustment on these screw holes. But generally speaking, you don't need to really worry about it because um, uh, by the time you've actually bolted it onto the laptop, you can align the screen on the laptop bolts anyway. So 
Uh, I just make sure that these aren't absurdly wonky and just tighten everything up. There we go. And I shall now reassemble this before the back lid falls off of the LCD, which I'm fairly certain it wants to do. One could argue that this laptop is um, not worth fixing slash not long for this world. I think um, this service that it's getting now, I shall probably say to the customer, you know, look, I've done what I can to make this as good as I can without spending a lot of money on parts. Um, be prepared for this laptop to break because it's. I don't think this laptop is long for this world. Look at that. One of the antennas just fell off in my hand. This is exactly what I'm talking about. See, now the issue is, is that the antennas, this isn't what it came in for. It came in because the speakers were busted. And I replaced the speaker and said, hey, I'll tighten those hinges while I'm here. Let's see if I've got another antenna array. This is what happens, guys. I mean, thankfully, because it's an old laptop, I've probably got another antenna array. So, eh, it's not an issue. but. You can see how this can very quickly turn into a nightmare. So yeah, be super careful. This is why you need to be so careful when working on old stuff. People always say, oh, these are still good. They're okay. They're not. In, in the vast majority of cases, there's so many nasty things to find when you open these up. Back in a moment. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a breaker laptop here that's got a dead logic board in it. Um, so I've got, and that's got some, uh, uh, that's got some good antennas on it, or just antennas that are hopefully less broken than these ones. So I could, I could take this display assembly apart and, t and steal the antenna array from it. However, given that also we've got all of this to deal with as well, um, this could probably be glued down. I've not actually tried gluing that in before, but it could probably be glued back in. However, just given the state of this um, uh, display assembly, I'm just going to swap the entire display assembly out. Um, so yeah. Uh, again, what do I charge for this? Do I charge for this? These are the questions. I probably, I don't know if I'll charge anything, to be honest. Again, I'll, ju I'll charge my repair charge, but like, these parts aren't worth anything because these laptops aren't worth anything. Certainly not when they're dead and falling to bits like these ones are anyway. So it's just a case of just, you know, this is why I collect the old dead laptops because uh, every now and then you'll get a job like this and you'll be like, and every time bits keep falling off in your hands, you can be like, okay, that's fine. We'll just replace that. And you just keep replacing until you've got something that works. Hypothetically, yeah, no, that would be more work. For a moment, I was like, shall I just drop his logic board and drives into this chassis? But no, we're not going to go that far. This was supposed to be a five-minute job. How much do you want to bet that when I uh, get this thing put back together again, the speakers are still muffled? And I'll have gone through all of that hassle and still not fix the original problem for which the laptop entered the shop. So... <laughs> it could happen. What's holding you in? There we go. Right, are any of these about to fall off? Okay, they seem to be good enough. All these antenna cables get really weakened there because because this spot down here, when the display assembly opens and closes, this cable loom twists. And there's only about maybe 10 millimeters of twist space there. So the all these antenna wires actually undergo, a, you know, uh, almost 90 degrees worth of twist. And that's what kills these things um, over time. There's just not enough twist space there. What they should have done was put more space in the clutch area here. So the cables had like 
an inch or two inches of room to twist and then they would have been fine. However, the actual twist space is only about, you know, uh, 10 mil long at the most. So the actual twist force is very tight and very fierce. And that's what kills them. That is what has happened. These ones are not great. However, they have not broken. Um, and not broken is basically good enough for this laptop. It's good enough to get the thing back up and running again. Uh, what do I want? Display assembly. Let's keep going. Uh, friendly reminder, don't forget to disconnect the battery. I forgot to disconnect the battery. It'll almost certainly be alright, however, every now and then you get unlucky. I've seen it happen. Oof, that's a lot of dust. Okay, we've gotten this far and nothing else has dropped off of the laptop, so, so far so good. See if we can make it over the line. There we go. We've got enough connected to turn it on and try again. Bam, battery connected. <clears throat> Let's turn it on and have a listen. That's more like it. That's more like it, that is fine. The left speaker isn't working. Right speakers, the ones I replaced, they sound great. The left speaker, the one that I didn't look at, no. Okay. Let's take a look. The good news is I don't have to take apart all of the uh, um, DVD bay wireless area to get to the left speaker. I have to take the logic board out, however that's an area that I haven't gone to yet on this laptop. So, it's not so bad. If I'm lucky, the left hand speaker just isn't plugged in properly, or it's come out, or it's loose, or something like that. Otherwise, I guess I'll find another replacement part for this thing. And as you can see, I have lots lying around for these laptops because they're all dying, so I've got lots of breaker ones. And this is why it's worth keeping breaker laptops. Well, I say it's worth keeping them. This is why there is some use for breaker laptops. Can't imagine that it's come out. It doesn't look like this laptop has, this logic board has ever been taken out. We'll find out in a minute. There's a big giveaway for if the logic board has been taken out of one of these before. 
and that is that um, the cooling heat pipe will melt itself onto the back of the keyboard backlight. So <laughs> if, you, uh, if you have to rip the heat pipe off of the keyboard backlight, that means the logic board has never been out of the laptop. You can set up the left hinge cable retention bit because the buttons are up. There's a mark there, but it didn't melt. That looks right. Okay. That speaker looks a bit worse for wear. How has all this gotten here? Right, that's connected. There we go. Yeah, they're all plugged in, but looking at the state of that speaker, it wouldn't surprise me if it's also knackered. Um, what I'll do, I'll just uh, I'll take this off and we'll just replace this with another one as well. Because, you know, why the hell not? Yeah. I don't know why that's not working. I mean, there was some faint sound coming out of it, although it was hard to tell. I think the faint sound was coming out of the right speaker still. I put the, um, I put the balance all the way over to the right hand and then played the sound effects and was not getting audible feedback from the left. All right, and I'll tell you what else is, because there was so much dust in this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just repaste the CPU as well. Because the last thing I wanna do is just hear the fan ramp up on this because the thermal paste is also cooked to hell. And once again, I'm fiddling with something which the laptop has not come in for repair for. And you saw how that went with the display assembly. But, uh, whatever. These are all things that I can fix. I think the question is, when you're sort of deciding how far down this rabbit hole are we going? Yeah. Dry, dry as powder. Um, how far down in this rabbit hole are we going? The answer to that is as far as you are capable and have the means to continue fixing. Um, like, I'm taking this off knowing that I have the, uh, the means to straighten it all out. If you don't have spare thermal paste, you're probably better off leaving the cooling system alone, you know? That should go without saying, but nah. go. That looks a lot smarter. Back into the laptop it goes. <sighs> Microphone in and now we just play the game of getting all of the connectors to point up at the same time. Bam. That was a distinctly louder chime than the previous ones we've had. I feel good about that. Lovely. Good. I am content. That is no longer muffled and it's about twice the volume that it was before because all the speakers now work. Shut down. And now I've just got to clean this thing and put it back in its cases. Uh, and we are done. Uh, oh, I left out the left hinge thingy as well. Good thing I didn't put all the screws in. I've got a mixture of screws on the counter from where I took the other laptop apart as well. Okay, so the reason why you have to make sure that you disconnect the battery on this laptop and why I got a bit lucky earlier on 
Well, I say a bit lucky. You have to be really unlucky for something to happen. But the um, the backlight uh, power rail to the display connector, uh, that is actually an always hot line. It's really easy to accidentally short the backlight line to ground and blow the backlight fuse. Uh, and um, whereas if you disconnect the battery, obviously that cannot happen. So yeah, as I say, that's why you have to be careful about disconnecting the battery. Really easy to forget on these laptops because certainly when we're starting out working over here, you're not even looking up there. So anyway, reconnect. Covers on. Let's clean. So to deal with all of this, um, to deal with all of this grimy scum that builds up on the sides of MacBooks when they're in these hard cases, this only happens with hard cases, by the way. Uh, what I do is I spray um, using Tesco window and glass. Uh, I spray directly onto the cloth, and then you just go around the edges like so, and that'll all just scrub off. You might need to give it a little bit of elbow grease, but it'll come off. Alcohol probably won't shift grime like this. You can try it, but you'll probably need something that's got a little bit more clean in it, like glass cleaner does. You know, vinegar water solution maybe? Or you could just, you know, buy glass cleaner for a quid. There we go, that'll do. And uh, that laptop looks significantly better now, actually. And, you know, it's got an SSD in it, so it's not shockingly slow either. Um, so, yeah, not bad going. All right, thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, my support links are down in the description below, or wait for the end card, uh, to see my Discord, my Patreon, and my Twitter account. Uh, we've also got memberships on the channel now as well, so you can also hit the Join button underneath the video, and you can give me a couple of quid a month if you like what you see and you want to support this content. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye!